guys, Mrs. Hopkins here with another really cool winter project. This is a project that I could do with a lot of different grade levels. So you never know, you could be the class that gets picked to do this project. It's one of my favorite ones. It's done with some chalk pastels. Let's get a good look at it. This is a winter landscape at night. Now we live in Florida, so I like to do a lot of really cool winter projects that we don't really have here, so we can really appreciate them. This one has some really cool uh, northern lights in the skies and some snowy hills and some dark pine trees. And I'm gonna teach you how to do it today. Sit this guy off to the side. You can use black paper or dark blue or dark purple, but I've got black paper here today, so that's what I'm gonna use. And you are going to need chalk pastel. You could use oil pastel, but I find that chalk pastel works a little bit better for this project. You will need a tissue or a couple tissues. And when I use my box, it always has this foam protector. So I take the foam and I put it in the lid and then the tray, I just stick right inside of both of those so that I'm not losing any pieces. So the first color you're gonna want is some white. And you're gonna go ahead and draw your snowy hills. You could do this paper um, horizontally too, but Miss Hopkins is doing vertical because it gives me a little bit more sky. I'm gonna fill this in with my chalk. So I'm filling in my white snow, one side, the other side. I don't have to get it super duper thick, but it's up to you. I'm gonna grab that tissue I have, and I'm just gonna blend it a little bit. Just kind of fill in the gaps. I'm not trying to wipe the chalk away, but I'm just trying to fill in the spaces a little bit better. Now, chalk is a bit messy, so you might have some fingerprints, but don't worry. <laughs> Most of those are gonna get covered up. So here's my two hills. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with that sky. For this example that I did um, last year, I used some greens and some purples and a little bit of white and yellow. It's up to you to use whatever colors you want. Um, if you just do a quick YouTube search of Northern Lights, you'll see that a lot of them um, have lots of different colors. Like one of my favorites is this bright green. I'm definitely gonna use some yellow. And of course, my favorite color of purple and I may even use a tiny bit of white again. And I do streaks, so I'm not gonna be just coloring all over circles. I'm gonna do like angled little tiny streaks across the sky. So let me show you what I'm talking about with um, my yellow, for example. So I'm gonna use the edge of the chalk, and I'm gonna do different sections. So there's gonna be some empty space. You wanna leave a little bit of black space or blue space or purple space, whatever color paper you have, um, to show that the, the Northern Lights don't always take up the whole sky. And now I'm gonna go with my second color, which I'm choosing as green. So I'm going the same direction. They're all kind of pointing the same way. And now for that bold color, here's a little bit of purple. Now I'm gonna blend those with my tissue and I'm just gonna go the same direction. So just gently wiping them the same way we went so they don't look chalky anymore. And they have a softer edge it's okay if you go into the snow a little bit. We can cover it up with a little bit more white chalk. 
you won't see me dusting it away with my hand. You'll definitely see me blowing the dust away with my air. That way I keep my hands pretty clean and I don't have chalk smeared everywhere. So I did have a little bit of a spot to fix down here with my snow. <laughs> and that's okay. And maybe even a couple streaks of white. Now I still have some black paper showing and you could totally use your fingers to blend. If you don't have a tissue, you can, but remember, they're gonna get a bit dirty. So at this point, you can decide if you would like to have a moon in your picture. If you don't want a moon, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use a black piece of chalk now for some trees. So when I'm thinking about a really nice landscape, um, I have to remember that the trees that are really close to me and close to me in the picture, the foreground should be bigger. And the ones that are really far away in the background should be teeny tiny. So I'm gonna do three different size trees. One for the foreground, one in the middle ground, and one in the background. Maybe a few more in between. So if I start with a really big tree and I want it to be close to me, I'm gonna start maybe on this side. I'm gonna draw a nice big black line. This is my tree trunk. And I'm going to do, just like you would like an arrow or a feather, little branches that angle away. Now you do see through this a little bit, but you've got your tissue. You can curve them a little bit and flare them out on the sides. You want to give a little bit of a curve. So then you can take your tissue, if you want to keep your fingers pretty clean, and just lightly blend that so it fills in the space a bit more. And if you really want to go pointed at the top, you can go all the way up high. So it's up to you. Your trees don't have to be perfectly symmetrical on both sides, but this one's pretty close to me, so it should be the biggest. Now I'm gonna do one that's really far away, maybe on this hill right here. So a short line. And I wanna keep that same shape. And I'll just use my finger right here. So I've got two trees in the picture. When you're doing art, odd numbers are your best friend. Right now I have two trees, and if I want an odd number, I need to get three. That way I can have something in the middle, something to balance out both sides. So this one's gonna be in the middle ground. It's gonna be medium size, not super tall, not super tiny. And I'm gonna put it right about here. back and forth. And then the closer to the top, the shorter they get. So now I've got three different distances for my trees. Now at this point, it's looking pretty awesome. If you wanna do some stars in your sky, grab your white and instead of making this sound, you're gonna see that I can draw little stars completely silent. I'm gonna stick with a moonless picture, so no moon in my picture. Now this one that I did last year has our snowflake juice on it. So that's that mix of paint and water that your teacher might spray on yours if you're being really awesome. That's what gives it the snowflakes all over. But if you don't have any snowflake juice, it still looks really nice just as is. So this one would be my snowy sky landscape. Maybe I'll change the name of that. Forget what I was gonna call this one. 
but definitely takes place at night. And I think you're going to really love it. Have a great day. See you when I get back.